You are welcome to the Mazar channel. Today we are focusing on part four of our series, our series on Behold Barack Obama, the Antichrist of the book of Revelation chapter 13. This is part four of a five part series um, and it's per se on Barack Obama um, the Antichrist of the Book of Revelation. When Barack Obama became President of the United States, um, he had a limousine and named an automobile named the Beast. And as we are aware, uh, the Beast is one of the principal characters of the Book of Revelation, uh, Revelation chapter 13 and the beast is actually the antichrist and barack obama is the antichrist spoken of in the book of revelation this is by revelation is that the reason why we are saying barack obama is the antichrist is it because his vehicle is called the beast no uh, we are focusing on his presidential uh, records and when we talk about presidential records, uh, we are focusing on what it did. Um, there is a publication by uh, Prophecy News Watch. Um, it's an end time uh, monitor. And they had a publication um, on their website. And they are asking a question America, um, America's most biblically hostile US president. It's a question they are asking, and they are focusing on Barack Obama. And there are a lot of things that he did as president of the United States. And observers are questioning um, whether he's the most biblically hostile American president. And if you read it, there's no doubt that Obama is the most hostile president, when we say hostile in relation to God and Christ, the kingdom of the Messiah. Um, there's no question that you conclude Obama um, is working for Lucifer, is laying the foundation for the kingdom of the beast, and he's preparing the world for um, the Antichrist, and definitely he is the Antichrist by revelation. And so, whatever he's doing, he's doing for himself uh, because he's part of the kingdom of the Antichrist. Being the Antichrist uh, himself, he's part of the kingdom of Lucifer. And so, we are looking at his presidential records, and I'm focusing on what. Prophecy News Watch has done, the research that they have done, and we are just doing an analysis of the research. Number one, Obama hates Christ. If you hate Christ, then you are an anti Christ. And the book of John says there are so many antichrists. They have come, they've gone, and they hate Christ. And Obama is one of them. April 2009, at Georgetown University in Washington, D.C., Obama ordered that a monogram symbolizing Jesus should be covered when Obama was making a speech. Obama was making a speech in Georgetown University, a major university in Washington, D.C., and there was a monogram um, symbolizing Jesus Christ, and he said, you should cover it while he's making the speech. Um, he was offended by a monogram um, symbolizing uh, Jesus Christ. And for those who um, are watching this video, uh, people who are members of the Freemason don't mention the name of Jesus uh, in public whether they are pastors, they are professors, or presidents, or they are popes. 
They don't mention the name of Jesus in Christ. And the Lord has said that if you are shy to mention his name in public, then the Lord himself will not mention your name before his Father, and the one who created heaven and earth. So Obama is a hater of Christ, and that is his footstep and his footnote. Obama is against prayer. Uh, prayer is very important. Um, Paul said in Ephesians 6 verse 12, we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, we wrestle with principalities and powers. We wrestle with spiritual wickedness and um, dark kingdoms. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Spirit of deception sitting in high places. Or if somebody is the Antichrist, is he a principality? Is he a power? Is he a spiritual wickedness who is sitting in high places? Sitting in the White House? Sitting in the Vatican? Walking on the pulpit? If that person is a principality, prayers are weapons against principalities and therefore he will be against prayer. And Obama is noted for being against prayer based upon the research done by Prophecy News Watch. May 2009, Obama declined to hold services for the National Day of Prayer, a day established by American federal law at the White House. So it was a law passed by the government to hold a National Day of Prayer in the White House. And Obama did not honor the law May 2009. He declined. It's not that he was busy. He declined to hold a National Day of Prayer in the White House as demanded by federal law. And that was May 2009, only a year after Obama became President of the United States. Obama hates God. The Antichrist hates God. He will make war of God. And in part three, in the confirmation video, you know what Celestia said, that in a vision, uh, she was shown that God, um, Obama will make war of God and people in heaven. Why would he do that? It's because he hates God. And Lucifer hates God and made war with God. And the angels of the Lord defended the kingdom. Obama hates God. October 19, 2010, Obama deliberately omitted the phrase about the Creator when quoting the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence is, is a statement acknowledging America's independence and thanking the one who created the universe, responsible for creation, the creator, God, creator of the universe. And Obama omitted the phrase creator when he was quoting from the Declaration of Independence. He omitted the phrase about the word creator. The creator is God the God that Lucifer does not obey and worship, the God that the Antichrist doesn't obey and worship, the God that Obama hates. He's a hater of God. And he omitted the phrase about the Creator when he was quoting from the Independence uh, Declaration. October 
1910. Definitely, um, it's not only Obama. The Supreme Court of the United States in 1962, they made the ruling, and based on the ruling, you cannot mention God's name in prayer in public school. In the Supreme Court case, a landmark case, Angel versus Vitali, and Obama is on record as someone, a president who hates God, the most biblically hostile American president, the one who hates God to the point that he omitted the phrase about the creator when he was quoting from the Declaration of Independence. Religion. Obama also saw religion as an obstacle to his ideology, his belief in homosexuality. In December 2011, he made a statement about other countries' religious beliefs. He considered other countries' religious beliefs as obstacle to his radical homosexual ideas. The statements about homosexuality are recorded and his mockery of other people's religion is well known. His attempt to export homosexuality to Kenya is known. He did the same thing in Ghana. He did the same thing in Senegal. And the African leaders told him that they have their own culture and their culture believes in God. They believe in the principles of the Bible, including what is marriage, an union between a man and a woman. And Barack Obama saw other countries' religious beliefs as obstacle to homosexuality. And we have to look at Obama's relationship with the military. As the President of the United States, Obama definitely uh, was the Commander-in-Chief of, of the U.S. Armed Forces, and the military was under his command. Under his leadership as the Commander-in-Chief, June 2011, the Department of Veteran Affairs forbids references to God and Jesus in burial ceremonies at Houston National Cemetery. The Department of Veterans Affairs, these are the soldiers who fought the wars for America and they were conducting a burial ceremony at Houston National Cemetery. And the, the government forbid references to God and references to Jesus. And this is the military, an institution under the control of the Commander-in-Chief Barack Obama. It happened in the year uh, 2011, June 2011. Not long after Obama became uh, the Commander-in-Chief of the United States. Somebody's relationship with the military is very, very important, particularly when we're talking about the United States. The military is an important component of America's power, and it is part of the beast power. America is the Babylon spoken of in the, in the book of Revelation, and the military will be part of the weapons of war. And you know that the Antichrist will wage a war against God, wage a war against the Messiah. And when the war comes, the military uh, will be important, the military of America. And in, uh, Barack Obama is preparing America's military to be godless and anti-God. And so in June 2011, the Department of Veteran Affairs forbid references to God and Jesus in burial ceremonies at Houston National Cemetery. 
February 2012, they removed God's name. The Air Force, the US Air Force, removes God from the patch of rapid capabilities office. The word on the patch was in Latin, Dei, D-E-I, meaning God. And they removed it. They took the name God from the patch. It is all because of the commander in chief, somebody who is anti God, somebody who is anti Jesus, is anti Christ. He hates anything that um, glorifies the kingdom of God. And he's doing that, or he did that, because he himself is. Uh, the beast of the book of Revelation chapter 13 is the Antichrist and so his record is clear as somebody who blasphemes the name of God he mocks God he calls his Lumizin the beast mocking the book of Revelation he hates God and he doesn't want prayers to be said in the White House he's anti-God he's godless and he is the architect of transgenderism in America. And he was rewarded. And he was worshipped as the first gay president of America. The scripture is very clear that the Antichrist will blaspheme the name of God. And what a blasphemy when Time magazine shows the picture of Barack Obama and calls him the first gay president of America. Does it not answer the question raised by Prophecy News Watch? Is Barack Obama the most biblically hostile uh, president of America? His picture on Time magazine the first gay president of America, does it not make Obama the most biblically hostile president in American history? If Obama is the Antichrist, the son of perdition, does it surprise you when you see his record, his presidential records in the first four years? We only went through a few of his presidential records. Because of time, we didn't go over all of them. But you can consult prophecynewswatch.com to know the presidential record of Barack Obama. He came to the presidency, the White House, and used the political arena to lay a foundation for the new world order, for the kingdom of the beast. He is the ambassador of that kingdom, and he will be enrobed and enthroned finally as the beast of uh, the book of Revelation chapter 13. Behold, Barack Obama, the antichrist of Revelation 13. We are going to finish our expose in part five of our discussion and we are going to continue on the presidential record of barack obama so that you know what he did the foundation that he laid his fight against god which is an iceberg it's a tip of the iceberg it's just a fraction of what you do when he becomes the antichrist when he finally assumes the mantle of the Antichrist, he's already the Antichrist. He's waiting for his time. And his time is very short. The final trumpet of heaven has sounded. It's a warning to you. Barack Obama is the Antichrist of the book of Revelation. And the first four years of his presidency actually gave you a glimpse of his vision and future and his destiny and his end time assignment as the lieutenant of lucifer who 
will cause all men and women, small and great, to worship his father, Lucifer. Thank you for watching this video and expect part five of our expose on Barack Hussein Obama, the Antichrist of the Book of Revelation. Thank you.